Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right, got some more 2A news for you. This one's going to be a very quick video. Just want to pass along an update from GOA on the Georgia Constitutional Carry Bill, uh, Senate Bill 319. Uh, it has passed the Senate. 34 to 22 was the vote, 34 yay and uh, 22 nay. This article comes direct from GOA. Constitutional carry battle now goes to the House in Georgia. This was written by Jordan Stein over at GOA. Uh, and this is a pretty short article. We'll dive into it. This week, the Georgia Senate passed SB 319, the Constitutional Carry Bill. This means the Peach State is one step closer to joining the Constitutional Carry Club. I believe it would make us the 23rd state uh, to have constitutional carry, by the way. Gun owners need to immediately contact their state representatives to support and vote for constitutional carry. With your support, we can make 2022 the year Georgia restores the right to bear arms free from government infringements. So please take action immediately. In the lens of the uh, geopolitical sphere and the way that the world's going right now, I think armed citizenries are uh, definitely making uh, very much a comeback. Now, I'm going to make a, uh, a whole video about the Ukraine situation um, in a future. Uh, that'll be another, you know, uh, video all in of itself. But look at you know, society and its need to protect themselves. You never know when you're going to be the person that stands between, you know, evil and good, right? You know, you never know when you can be, you know, that change, that positive change in society. And I think that there's been a huge, huge push for constitutional carry. I think there's right now five or so other states that are pushing for constitutional carry right now. Uh, you might recall the video that we did just last week about Florida's constitutional carry bill. Um, so there are lots of things happening at the state level. And what we, I think, overall are trying to accomplish in the giant scheme of things is, you know, maybe one day we can see some type of, you know, wide range sweeping federal bill for constitutional carry. Um, but, you know, basically with states' rights and their ability to, you know, pass things the way they want in, in their own regard, stuff like that might be relatively difficult. So that's why these state fights are so important. You know, yeah, there might be, let's say, I don't know, Let's just throw a number out like, I don't know, 10 or 12 states or so that maybe in a million years would never pass constitutional carry, but at least you could get constitutional carry passed in the other states that will. So these states battles, that's why they're so you know important to keep your ear to the ground and to be involved in them. You know, there's lots of stuff going on. You have to pay attention to these things. You've got to call your reps. You've got to, you know, be the, the squeaky wheel so you get the grease. And uh, constitutional carry is a very common sense thing. It makes a lot of sense. And uh, it's just better for armed populace to be able to carry where they need to and without having some licensing requirement that creates a barrier between the Second Amendment and you being able to exercise your rights. I mean, that's what, a lot of it what it comes down to, right? You have to pay a fee to have a, a permit. You have to undergo a background check and all this crazy stuff. So constitutional carry makes a lot of sense because folks that, you know, might be disenfranchised because they maybe can't afford or go get a, a license. That's definitely a factor to have in place too. And licensing requirements, I mean, at the end of the day, they really are just trying to frisk you, not only for the monetary gains of charging you money for the license, but it's also a frisking of your privacy. You know, they're looking into your whole life. I mean, it's just constitutional carry is what we need to have far-reaching, right? If more people were armed and more people were able to protect themselves on an everyday basis, and if there wasn't some crazy barrier to people exercising their rights, you would see a lot less crazy stuff going on because people could stop the threat right when they see it. And I think these criminals and stuff would be a heck of a lot less inclined to want to do things to hurt people, you know, if they thought that you never know who the heck is going to produce a pistol and go to work if you're doing, you know, committing a crime. So uh, an armed society is a polite society, and we would like to see Georgia be a polite society uh, and continue to be a polite society. Uh, so definitely support the Georgia Constitutional Carry Bill. Check out the GOA article below. There is a take action uh, field there on the website. You can just, it's already pre-typed. You can send a message into your representative. No problem. Super easy to do. Support GOA. Uh, if you're looking for a great group of people to support, they're definitely uh, some of the ones looking to great people. Um, I'm a big fan of GOA and I really in, uh, like FPC as well. Firearms Policy Coalition is doing wonderful work and I really support those guys a lot in their efforts. Um, big thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you for watching today's video. We definitely uh, hope you enjoyed it. Have yourselves a great week. Many more videos on the way. I'm going to be you know, plugging away at some more things as they come up. Just trying to keep you guys informed of what's going on. Uh, if you want to support the channel directly, 
One way you can do so is go over to Ballistic Inc. and pick yourself up a snazzy new t-shirt. We graciously appreciate the support. Those funds go right back into supporting the channel so we can put out videos like this. Have yourselves a good one and get out there and support Georgia Constitutional Carry. Let's make ourselves number 23. Have a good one. <laughs>